So now we're going to start looking at how we're going to, and we've already checked for all the, we've done all the integrity checks. So we know everything's connected. We have all our beams and everything looks good, but we haven't assigned any properties and uh, we haven't created any loads. So that's what we're going to start doing today. If we look at the loads dialog, and that's this button on the, the left, you can bring up the loads dialog from here. Um, we can also find that in the loads menu up here. And if we hit create modify, it brings up the same dialog. Now, right now we don't have any load cases created. So we simply just click on the load case button and it will create the first one. You know, we have in, just like with beams and most other things in Maestro, you have an ID number and then a name that you can define. And usually for the first one, we'll probably do still water. Sometimes there's also a light ship um, that someone may want to define where you just have the structural weight and not worry about making it a, a low case you can uh, run. You know, don't include the uh, any of the additional mass distribution, just the, or I guess uh, I take that back. The, the light ship will include the, the additional mass distribution, but uh, it may not be a, a case that we actually run with the hydrostatic loads and such. At any rate, you know, still water is a pretty a uh, simple default load case that we'll usually run. Uh, so we can create that and you can create as many load cases as you want. And each one of these load cases can have different options available to it uh, or different ways of loading it, whether you're doing corrosion or you know, adding a, a additional acceleration or doing a, a fatigue calculation. There's an option for a hull grid or target load where you may have a, uh, a required bending moment envelope that you have to apply. Well, rather than trying to manually create that with some type of complicated wave pattern over the hull. You can simply give it a hull girder target load and tell it what the what the vertical bending moment say uh, needs to be at every station along the length of the hull. And Maestro will simply create artificial forces distributed along all of the nodes in the model to create that bending moment curve along the length of the hull. But at any rate, by default, uh, when we uh, create a load case, we'll have the the self weight of the model, basically all of the structure that we've modeled with our elements and beams and so forth. Uh, we'll want it to include gravity and we'll want it to be a floating structure. If it wasn't a ship floating in the water, if we didn't care about the hydrostatic load, we could uncheck this. And you can see now it becomes a non-floating structure and the balance tab goes away since we're not floating the, the vessel anymore. And you might use that for something like, uh, well, like that beam that we created initially. We may have it restrained at one end, and then we just put a point force at the other end and see how it deflects. Or uh, another use in terms of the marine industry might be if you had your ship in a dry dock or graving dock. Uh, we've done some analyses where we had the hull and we modeled the, the docking blocks under the hull with very large rigid cubes. Uh, that we created out of like two inch steel. We wanted them just to be perfectly rigid. And then on top of them to simulate the, the wood blocks, we used springs and we set the stiffness of the spring based on, there were some equations you can find just online even uh, for hardwood and softwood based on the areas and thicknesses of them. You can figure out what the spring constant would need to be. So we used uh, springs to model the blocks along the length of the hull to support it. Now, in that case, we you know, we had no hydrostatic pressure, so we turned off the floating structure. And that's just one example of when you might want to do that. 